So thank you, Alistair, for having us today. Thank no you problem, very sure. much for all your time. Would you like to start by telling us about your farming system here? Yeah, so this is Chivers Farm, based on the outskirts of Cambridge. Um, we're roughly a thousand hectares. Uh, that includes uh, a bit of contract farming. Quite a bit of spring cropping, uh, wheat, barley, some rape, but that's obviously becoming harder to grow. No root crops, this is, uh, this is quite heavy soil, high pH, high magnesium, calcium. Um, uh, centered sort of in uh, blocks around the outskirts of Cambridge. When did you start your precision farming journey and how did you get into it? Um, I suppose we got into it um, uh, very, really spreading P and K, which we, we no longer do. But um, and then from then we stepped onto uh, very, really spreading um, solid fertilizer. Um, and then we've switched out of that and gone to liquid. So we're now variably uh, applying um, liquid N. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, at the same time, we went into uh, variable drilling, um, variable seed rates. Um, and we just generally sort of progressed because we could do one, we learned about one, we sort of moved on to the other. And also, you know, it's incremental gains, isn't it? So, you know, you, 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 you may gain a little bit from one, but if you're stacking them all up, hopefully, you, you uh, build a bigger bit of the pie by, by using them all. You started your precision farming journey back in 2010, so 13 years ago. What were the challenges you found? Compared to now, um, I'd, I'd have to spend a lot more time uh, on the computer, moving files about and uh, creating files, putting them on a USB stick. Now, if you were to start tomorrow, um, that's all gone. Uh, I'm, I can now literally send a prescription for a variable rate fertilizer or, or a seed drilling map from the office here. Plus the fact you've got a lot of young younger guys out there now who've grown up with it and are used to it, they're used to guidance on a the tractor, they're used to bringing in folders, recording everything. So you know they're they're pretty slick anyway. So that, that helps a lot. What has been your experience of the precision farming journey here at Chivers Farm? We've had a lot of changes, um, bringing on RTK on all machines, mapping all the fields. Um, that's had a lot of benefits. Uh, we know exactly what we're farming. Um, when you fill the spray, you know exactly what you've got in. It is a big learning curve. Uh, we've had some good help from Ben Burgess. Um, some training where they've been out to us, we've been to them um, to set a lot of it up. Um, I think everyone's now used to it, on board with it, and it works really well. Originally you had you were working with two systems, so you had Trimble and Green Star. What made you go down the route of Green Star? It's a, just uh, accuracy, but uh, sim simplicity really. You, you know, you're dealing with a, one system; they're using the one file type, mm -hmm. um, so you're not trying to work with one and one the other because they don't cross over. What made you go down the variable rate route? There's so many journeys you could do with precision farming. Why variable rate? Um, well, it's simple to do. You know, with that, with the with the sprayer that we've got, and many sprayers on the market, it's it's, it's not difficult. Um, they all they all do it now. You just produce the map, put it in there. Why not? Why would why would you not? Like it's that, it's really not that difficult. Um, in terms of cost, yeah, there, there is a slight cost for the um, satellite imagery. I can't see why you wouldn't do it. What's your experience then of variable rate application? Um, we find that you'll still use the same amount of product over a field. Uh, what it tends to do is it will take product from bits that look really good, where it doesn't need so much, and put that on the bits that are a bit more backwards, needs a bit more, and therefore still using the same amount, but using it more efficiently. Um, at the end of the year, the crops do look more even. They tend to look uh, nicer level, you have to say that it, from a visual, it works well. What information do you use to make your variable rate decisions? Uh, well, the the N would be sort of based just based on the, uh, the satellite imagery, perhaps a bit of historic cropping in there as well. Um, the variable seed. 
that's a tricky one. If we could uh, ground truthing what we've done in the past, you know, seeing what we actually get compared with what we think we're going to get. Um, but that does take time. That's what you should really be doing is getting out there after you've drilled when it's, when it's coming up, using a scouting app, uh, being able to go to the areas of the, find the areas of the field where you've changed the seed rate and, and just count what you've got. You've got your trailed sprayer behind us here, so how does that help with your variable rate application? With the section control, uh, we will see uh, a 1% overlap with this machine. Um, which is obviously a huge saving from doing it manually. If you had to do it manually, I don't know what the exact figure is, but you would be probably 10%. Um, especially on a 36 meter like this, trying to turn sections off is not easy. Uh, obviously that has a massive saving over, uh, over a year. You collect your yield map data off your combine, so you have that historical data. So if you do want to, in future... Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, in, yeah, we, have the, yeah we have the data. Um, I mean, you can create an awful lot of data. Let's, you know, let's be frank about this. We've got some lovely maps, but if you don't, you know, and they sit on the computer and you don't do anything with them, generally, that's probably the next step. That's the next precision thing that we need. Something that helps you, that you can upload it to, and 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 can do all the work very quickly for you to come up with something or other. Because otherwise, you've got one heck of a lot of work on your hands. What do you think the next steps are for precision farming here? Uh, I'd like to try and layer everything, so from the seed map all the way through the FERT maps to the combine at the end, um, and, and try and find correlations to, to prove that it's working um, and it's giving us the return it needs to.